Hi, I'm Jay Schultz with Pool Technicians. Hi, I'm Wendy Corden with Pentair Water, and today we'd like to talk to you about the IntelliFlow pump, a little bit about its programming, and how it can save you money and keep your pool as clean and clear as possible. Our goal here today is to get you comfortable with the IntelliFlow pump, the menu, and the different items to look for. So the first thing we thought we ought to do is go over the screen and show you what each item means. And this is the standard way the pump would be. The filter light would be lit. This says filter mode right here. And the start light is lit. There's a little LED above start. That indicates that this pump is ready to go. And if it, had, um, if it was scheduled to be running, it would be running. But to further explain, here's the menu. It tells you that it's in filter mode. You can see here. You can see the time of day. And then right here it shows zero watts. Obviously this pump is not running right now, so there aren't any watts being consumed. But if you were to hit the down arrow key right here, you would see that it also says RPM, and it says gallons per minute. That's the very interesting technology about this pump. At any given time, we could know what is happening and what it's set to be running. So, and it tells you that you have power. Of course, there's lights on as well. And then it says running power safe. If I move this button over here to vacuum, this is a vacuum button, and I hit vacuum, the pump would turn on, and what it is set up for is for the homeowner or the service person to be manually vacuuming the pool. When it's in this mode, it disables the sensors so that the pump, if when the manual vacuum sticks to the surface or when you suck a little bit of air vacuuming, the pump does not shut off and alarm out and disturb your vacuuming process. The next button is backwash. That is mainly used for uh, DE filters, which aren't that common here in the valley, but uh, other areas. And this button is important because it resets the head pressure that this pump recognizes in the system. The next button is manual mode. Now, if you were to hit manual mode and start, the pump would start running. As you can tell, a very high gallon per minute. Um, that would be if you're trying to initially prime your filter or to get the system running. We do not recommend that you leave the pump ever in manual mode when you leave the yard or you leave the home because that also disables the sensor and the pump is running at a high speed typically. The next buttons that are important are feature one and feature two. These are egg timer functions. They're designed to program the pump to run at a specific gallon per minute for a specific duration. The service person or the customer walks up to the pump and hits this button if they want to have the pump run. You can see this one is actually set up to run at priming. See, the pump actually tells you what position it's in. It says priming right here. It's priming at 30 gallons per minute. And in just a minute, it's going to change to the set speed for feature one, which would be 25 gallons per minute. Now it reads that the pump is primed, and now it's running. It's running at 25 gallons per minute, and you can hear the pump slowing down to make sure that it's at 25 gallons per minute. If you hit the down arrow key, which scrolls you through the menu, you can see that it's set for 60 minutes. That's the default that we established for feature one, and as it runs, it's going to count down. And 60 minutes is the egg timer that it's set for, is for the feature one. Uh huh. And an egg timer just is basically like a timer that you turn on and it'll turn itself off. Exactly. One How would time. you change the programming right now if you had 60 minutes for feature one and you wanted to change that to 30 minutes? To 30 minutes? Uh -huh. You would actually hit your menu button at any time, doesn't matter which position the pump is in, if you hit menu, it's going to allow you to get into all the menu items of the pool. So the first one is pool data, second one's priming, third one's filter, then there's time and contrast, that's how you set your clock. And then there's features. features. You would hit select, and it would allow you to go to feature one, feature two, and there's other features that are based on time. But let's go to feature one. We would hit select. It tells you the flow that you're looking for, and if you hit the down arrow key, it tells you the duration, obviously 60 minutes. Now the menu before, if you wanted to change the flow, Mm -hmm. Or go ahead and change the duration on this, and then let's let's change the flow on that feature also. Okay, so we would, in order to change from 60 minutes, we would hit the select key, and that makes the cursor active, so you can move it around. We'll hit the down arrow key, and change it to, what time did you want to change minutes. it to? 30 minutes. 
Okay. We'll go over here to the, the now it's 30 minutes. Three. We hit enter to save, and now you have a time duration of 30 minutes. You wanted to go to flow, Jay? What right. did you let's want to change, change the gallons a minute to uh, 30 gallons a minute. Okay, so let's hit select. Move the up arrow key, you can move over this way. And now you've got 30. You, you want to save it. it, you hit the enter button. Okay. Okay, now if we go to feature one. 30 minutes. It's still in the priming mode, and you can see it on the screen. It says priming. and then it will say running. So now we're at 30 minutes of time and 30 gallons per minute. Just to show them too the other features, what you saw in there and how you scroll through to get your wattage mm -hmm. with the down arrow. So you hit the down arrow key and at any time you can run through the different things that are happening. So there's your watts. That's actually what the watts are being consumed to run this. And you can see that they're falling. The pump hasn't quite equalized. After it's been running for a couple minutes, it will become stable. We're going to simulate an alarm code going off on the pump. We've got it running right now. We've got a valve tied into the suction side. We're going to close it, which would equal out to maybe a very clogged basket, somebody getting trapped on the suction line. We've just closed it now and let her build up some vacuum. And there we just had our alarm go off. And as you can see, it says system block alarm, which means basically that the suction side has been blocked and it's shut the pump off. I'm going to go ahead open the valve, Wendy, and then you want to tell them how to reset this alarm? We've opened up the valve back up. We're going to hit reset. No, will erase that alarm menu. We'll hit feature one to start it up again. Kind of the important thing for you to know about that is that, again, we tried to show you how unique this pump is, and one of the features is that it has the ability to shut off and not damage itself when you have no water flow. 